Welcome to Cure Dog Talk. I am your host, Laura Reeves, and this is a conversation that I am incredibly excited about, and I think you guys are going to be as well. The American Kennel Club has started a, pro a program called the Breeder Symposiums, and I, I participated in one of these in January in Chicago with the um, Schomburg shows with the International Kennel Club of Chicago. And I'm joined today by Vanessa Sko and Aaron Myers, and they are the team that's sort of leading this charge. And I'm thrilled. I just think this is such an amazing program that the AKC has pulled together. And I am so excited to talk to these two young women. So welcome, you guys. Hey. Thank you. Excellent. So, okay, Vanessa, let's have yes. you start. And you're the executive director of breeder development. Erin, you are yeah. the project analyst for ICG. So Vanessa, why don't you start with your 411? Tell the listeners all about you and your background. I think the American Kennel Club, sometimes we, we lose sight of the actual people that make up the organization. So um, so I am, I have been working for the American Kennel Club now for about eight years. Um, I've been in my current role for um, over two years. Um, and I came, I'm from, originally from New Zealand. I came to the United States to um, learn about professional dog handling and I never left and was a professional handler myself. And upon my retirement, um, went to work for the AKC, which was fabulous. Um, I'm a third generation breeder. Um, and I breed, currently breed West Highland White Terriers with my husband in Indiana. And um, yeah, that's about it. Still um, very much participate in the hobby of showing dogs. I love that. Absolutely love that. Erin? Um, let's see. I, um, Erin Myers. Um, I work for AKC now for two years, and um, my role in ICG, I think, is unique. It's the internal consulting group, and that's sort of the department that gets thrown special projects to see what people like to do. Um, what sticks against the, the wall, right? <laughs> exactly. And so um, before coming to work for AKC, I was a professional dog handler. Um, I'm also a third-generation dog breeder. Uh, I currently breed Vigilas and um, English Cockers occasionally and Malamutes occasionally. Um, but yeah, like Vanessa, was a pretty successful dog handler, and um, we're just really excited to be kind of in in the nitty gritty here with AKC getting some cool stuff done. And and to me, I I just think this is one of the most exciting developments I've seen come from AKC in a while. And so I really want you guys. Um, Vanessa, maybe you can start as the executive director and tell us a lot about what the breeder symposiums are about, where they're going to be, what they're going to be. I just, it's such a great program. So um, back at the end of 2022, um, the AKC was approached by the International Kennel Club of Chicago um, to try to put together an educational portion of their show. They were trying to capture, you know, attendees to come to the show as well as gate. And um, with that, um, Erin was very heavily involved and um, her brain kind of went to, well, what if we, you know, she's been involved also working where she, and I'll let her speak on that later, but she's been involved working on a grooming, similar grooming program. And a large part of what they do in the grooming program is education. Um, and in the breeder world that I work in, um, I, I feel that, and I think Erin can reflect this as well, that education is that one thing that kind of it puts us all on the same playing field. We all can learn, no matter whether you're first litter, your hundredth litter, whether you've been doing this for 50 years or you know six months, education is kind of that common denominator that we have that we can all um, gain insight from. So basically this, this symposium, we were able to coordinate uh, with Scott File and put on a three-day symposium. Um, we had two classrooms running simultaneously. Um, we um, were able to coordinate some fantastic speakers. Um, I don't know if it was the time of the year. We were just really fortunate. We had a very small window to organize this event. Um, we had yourself speaking, which was and wonderful. I, I got my call like a week ahead. I'm like, well, uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was definitely um, some last minute coordinating. Uh, but um, we got Dr. Marty Greer, who's um, obviously veterinary village up in Wisconsin to come speak on reproduction. We had Eddie Zook 
from OFA who brought along three veterinarians who each um, was a cardiologist, a radiologist, and an ophthalmologist, and they gave a deep dive on um, OFA and what the requirements are and going deeper further into like what they're looking for when they're doing those exams. Right. Um, we had our own Dr. Jerry Klein, who's our AKC veterinarian on staff, um, and we had a, some, we also had, you know, um, and some other uh, classes as well, but we, so we were able to coordinate this together and had a couple of classrooms going on, as I said, simultaneously, and um, we sent out invites and um, charged people to attend and, and, cre and uh, attend these classes, which I think went really well. I don't know if, Erin, you want to go on a little bit further in, than that. Um, okay. Absolutely. I think that, um, you know, I was I was in breeder development before I moved to ICG. And like Vanessa said, um, you know, I was really struck when talking to breeders that like that truly is what we are all after is education and that that's what unites us all. And it's so hard to find really trustworthy sources. And I mean, we see it every day. You know, people turn to social media and they'll ask an innocent question and be jumped on by 50 people. And so um, what I saw in attending some grooming trade shows was how these groomers could come together, sit in classrooms without their dogs, and everybody could just learn in a, in a scenario where you're not being judged and um, you can unite and network and really elevate everybody. And um, so that was like my vision when we, when I heard Breeder Symposium at IKC, I'm like, oh my God, this is our opportunity to prove the concept and to show, um, you know, the, the people that we work for, you know, that are above us, like, hey, there's an opportunity here to um, elevate the entire industry. Um, because, you know, when you go online and you research, there isn't um, a lot of great websites and there isn't a lot of great books. A lot of books are dated, you know. So truly, I mean, if you're a breeder and you're just getting into it, you're navigating a lot of the waters alone. And um, I mean, a lot of times people say, hey, find a mentor. But that's not easy to do. And, um, you know, people are busy and it's intimidating to just like walk up to somebody and say, hey, I want to get involved, but how do I find a mentor? Um, there's a huge chasm there. And I think that this is an opportunity to kind of close that gap. So we're really well, excited about it. Pure dog talk, I have said all along, education is the answer to everything. And, and I do my bit, but I'm one little me, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Having yes. the force of the American Kennel Club and just the weight of the organization behind this concept, I, I mean, I, I'm doing a happy dance because yeah. this is what I've been begging for and pushing for yes. and trying to fill in those tiny little gaps, right? Yeah. And so yeah. I just I, I just think it's amazing. So I know you guys, I at least... I am told that you are planning another symposium with the IKC in August. Yes. We're actually not going to be um, doing okay. it in Chicago in August. Okay. We are going to try and do it again in um, Schomburg in January. Okay. We are planning a, a symposium to coincide with Houston, Houston in July and then Columbus meet the breeds in October. Very cool. Um, and we have an early bird special if people want. Um, I think you can... I, we can add that link um, maybe at the, in the <laughs> we will drop the link in the show notes for sure we will make sure everybody has how to get into these yeah 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 and um, or at least to sign up for our newsletter because um, this year we're doing two next year we want to do more and um, eventually and we can get into this we think that this is going to all tie into an even bigger program um, so talk to that me about really the bigger program come on here we go okay. breaking news breaking news on pure dog talk <laughs> Um, well, the bigger program is, and we're just in the beginning stages of kind of working through um, a, a, a accolade similar to Breeder of Merit, where um, breeders can earn credits and, to become an educated breeder. So um, and it doesn't matter what sport you're involved in, um, if you have toy dogs and, you know, it's going to be for everybody. Um, and we're just going to track the courses that you take, make sure you're taking your breed standards, um, form and function, all the basic stuff. And then from there, um, you know, once you reach a certain amount of credits, you'll be awarded this educated breeder badge, which we haven't named yet. And um, I probably shouldn't even be talking about it, but I think that everyone's going to be really excited. And um, I'm the kind of person that likes to, you know, build up momentum while I can. <laughs> I love it. I think it's a really amazing... And, and Vanessa, I'd like you to speak to it, you know, from the breeder development part department, 
specifically, I, we talk, we started talking about education, but it is the rising tide raises all boats, right? It's everywhere. Yeah, and what we're finding is how do we how do we combat animal rights movements, right? Yes. How do we combat them? How how do we all you know we all say we want to stick together and we should unite together, and I think education is one way we can and we can prove to um, you know Mr. And Mrs. Puppy Buyer that you know I've not only am I doing my health testing and you know trying to do the best job breeding, I'm also educating myself going forward as well, and to be able to prove to those puppy buyers, no matter what, as I said, no matter what kind of breeder you are, you could be breeding a hundred litters or five litters or whatever, that you're going above and beyond to make yourself a better entity to make and ultimately in the end make better puppies, right? That's what their goal right. is. And so we can't, as fanciers, we can't keep them all. So we make those better puppies for those puppy buyers and those pet buyers. How wonderful is that? Um, and I, you know, and, and to be honest, I, um, there are some friends of mine who are having difficulties breeding and um, don't know where to turn. And so to have this education, to be able to walk them through some scenarios or have somebody, you know, and maybe a speaker that they connect with, or also the networking opportunities that, at these symposiums where it even happened in Schaumburg where two breeders met, they happened to have the same breed. They started talking. I mean, who knows where that, so maybe those mentorships are created from these symposiums as well. And those, that's where we do learn the most is from other people's experiences because they always say, you know, if you've been in this long enough, everything's happened to you. Um, but I haven't personally, I haven't been in this long enough. So everything hasn't happened to me yet, but I want to be prepared. And how else do you be prepared, but with education? Well, and I think, you know, one of the things that I said when I did my presentation, I'll talk to you for 20 or 30 minutes, but then let's t talk amongst ourselves because I 100 yeah. percent agree that it, it is that sharing of information, asking questions, feeling safe and like a safe space. Right. Yeah. Safe to yeah. ask your question and get real information. I mean, your point that you said earlier about social media and the and the. <laughs> Yeah, keyboard warrior mentality yeah. that exists there um, from people who really are not necessarily subject matter experts. Right. Well, and I always think, you know, like anything, what works for you doesn't work for somebody else. And here, how dare you tell me what works for me? And so, education should be able to teach us that you know, here's the what could work. Here's your five options. And maybe you pick one of those things that works for you. And I think that's a very American spirit to have in general. And, but I think when you're learning in person and not these, when we do these symposiums and eventually become something, not everything will be in person. We do hope to eventually be able to record these sessions, have them available online as well. So I don't want to, you know, make sure that is mentioned that it's not going to, you don't have to attend an event. The great part about attending an event is that networking and that safe space among you can don't, it doesn't matter if you, you know, ask a silly question kind of type thing, because it's nothing silly in this world because breeding is, as we know, Oh, it's there are no stupid questions. <laughs> yeah. um, and I want to point out too, like, um, it, some of the symposiums are going to coincide with confirmation dog shows, but we really, really want to expand outside of that. You know, the Meet the Breeds um, in Columbus in October, I think it's going to be really unique um, to get people from all sports, all, all walks of life to come and you know, realize that like you do have a place at AKC just because you're not showing your dogs in confirmation doesn't make what you do any less valuable. Um, you know, we all want healthy dogs. We all want um, dogs that have great temperaments. And um, I mean, I think that this is just the very beginning of strengthening um, our community as breeders. We are at the Kentuckiana cluster of dog shows and I'm talking to Dr. Karen Potter. She is a German wire hair pointer breeder, a Trupanion breeder, and she's also a veterinarian. And Karen's going to talk about what Trupanion means to her as a breeder and also what it means for her as a veterinarian. When I became a Trupanion breeder and I sent my litters out, I knew that they were going with 30 days of coverage had one of my owners have an emergency with them. That's comforting to me as a breeder to know that they can get help. As a veterinarian, there are many cases where we have to make decisions on how to treat things based on financial restraints. And when the financial restraints come into play, we can't always do absolutely everything for that pet. 
So if my puppies are covered, at least for those first 30 days, I know that if they get sick, they can get the best possible care. And I love that. And I, I really, really love the passion that you two young women are able to bring to this. Longtime people in the sport, dog breeders, real dog breeders, like with passion and to just, I just love that. It, it is sometimes, it is sometimes something that we don't see as much as we'd like to. Yeah. And I think that's something that both Aaron and I have is we are in it personally, Aaron and I are in the trenches. Um, we currently both probably have litter. I know I have two litters on the ground. And so we have personal experiences that we are like, oh, wouldn't it be great to have a class on this? So because those are the questions I have as well. So if I'm having them, I'm sure somebody else is having them. And that's kind of where we bring our, our personal experiences into the play into play. Mm -hmm. I love it. I, I know on Pure Dog Talk, I half of my episode topics are something just happened to me and I call somebody and say, hey, can we talk about this thing, right? Because it's <laughs> happened to me and so let's talk about it. <laughs> so I do think that that hands-on, real active involvement in, in the sport of dogs, in dog breeding, brings so much to your respective departments, right? In terms of, mm -hmm. of you know, we're really doing it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We're not just trying to court. We're not just trying to coordinate something here. We're, we're you know, selfishly, <laughs> you know, I wish I selfishly, I wish I could attend half of this, you know, the classes that we yeah. had, but unfortunately we had to be out front, but right. um, because I do think it's great information that you all gave during, you know, that Schomburg event mm -hmm. and we hope to have it for Houston and Columbus. And so question, and I think I asked you about this before, Erin, those are recorded the ones we did. Are they available yep. for people who didn't sign up? Like, can I go there and purchase Marty's up um, talk that was at the same time as mine? And if you do that again, I'm going to cry. So <laughs> <laughs> yes. Put me um, up against Marty. Come on, man. <laughs> I know. I, know. Um, I, I was in the same boat because I was up against... Um, was I up against Claire? And I'm yeah. like, oh, man, like, I want to listen to my DNA and I can't because I got to give my own presentation. But... Um, Yes, some of the courses will be available um, on Canine College. Uh, three of them are already live. Um, it's just, you know, awesome. education is extremely strapped as far as bandwidth. I mean, there's so much that we're trying to do all the time. Um, I mean, in AKC as a whole, but slowly but surely they're coming out. And um, but that doesn't mean to say like you shouldn't attend one of these events in person. Yes. And the cool thing is, is, um, you know, when we go to Houston, like I got, we got lucky for IKC in Chicago um, because, you know, that's where I grew up. I knew a lot of the speakers personally um, and it was really cool to be able to get local people that were really well respected, like Marty. I mean, come on, Marty Greer is a legend in the Midwest. Westminster if, Veterinarian of the Year. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, she, she's done, um, she did a frozen semen breeding for me from like 15 year olds, um, sperm with this English cocker dog from Europe. And I, to the, even today, I have great grandkids from that litter. And so, I mean, she's touched so many lives. And so to get her to come is great. And what I think is interesting, back to my point, was um, when we go to other parts of the country, it gives us an opportunity to find those great people in that part of the country and really speak to that region. And so I like um, that. Works. <laughs> I like that. And so do you have kind of a a preliminary idea what the Houston um, event is going to cover. Can we talk about that or we're not there yet? No, I think we can. Um, we have a couple cool things. Adam King is going to be down to do um, a talk on ophthalmology again. Um, okay. And I mean, he's got an immense amount of wisdom on breeding too. Um, so I'm hoping I can kind of leverage him to do some more stuff. Um, Kathy Rust, she's the one whose courses are available on Canine College now. Um, she is an incredible um experienced breeder um if you guys don't know who she is uh she's a platinum like double platinum breeder of merit in um Vigla's and so much talent there and um she has this brilliant way of like breaking down pedigree analysis and um um 
discussing male lines and why it's important that we all keep stud dogs and like it it kind of comes back to the shortage of stud dogs within our breeding world um anyway she'll be there she gives a great class on breeding 101 too because we want to be able to offer beginner and advanced tracks for people so um if you've never bred a litter you're absolutely welcome to come if you've bred 100 litters we're gonna have stuff for you um so yeah, and then we do want to really focus on some socialize, socialization and enrichment because we know how important that is for the develop, development of puppies. And um, I mean, I could go on and on. If, Vanessa, who, who am I forgetting? <laughs> Um, I, th I think because as we're, as we're still going through is we do have Eddie Zook again, who is from oh, OFA, who's going to attend. Um, and um, Dr. Clear Wiley, who is from our AKC DNA department, is going to talk about DNA in, in depth and then hopefully also about a new DNA product that will be out shortly. So that should be really mm -hmm. exciting. And I do want to remind there are, you know, there's um, some of these classes obviously have costs involved, whether it be per class or per day or per weekend or per three days but there are some free classes as well. And so um, those free classes would be, um, we have a class on the Breeder Toolkit, which is AKC's online um, system to be able to log in your dogs, litters, and, and see everything actually, which um, I just realized the other day, I could go get even look at my dog in Breeder Toolkit and see how many points it had. Yeah. So I didn't have to navigate my way through AKC.org anymore, which is fabulous. Oh, and then wow. we'll also- have Now that right there, now I might sign up. <laughs> Oh, yeah. it's, it's free, free. It's free to use it. it. It's mm -hmm. amazing. So we have a great Kelly Kozalski from AKC is a great teacher. Um, and so she's going to be giving free classes on that. Um, and then we're also going to have our head of inspections, Marcus Bach, give a class on inspections. Because as breeders, we're all kind of nervous. Are we going to get inspected? What happens when we get inspected? And I think just to be able to have a class that people could sit in on and ask them questions so they're better prepared and to realize it's not a big scary thing as well. So there'll be some free classes on offer as well for people that are attending. And I think, um, you know, it's important to remind you guys that like any revenue that comes in is going right back into breeder development projects, which I think is like this really cool thing that we've kind of created that way. It's like, you know, I don't want anybody to think like, oh, it's just another thing. I like this, Erin. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's like back to the proof of concept of like, we right. know breeders want this and we, we're going to be able to fund the whole project because we know that like, it's exactly where we need to be. Um, and for the Houston Symposium, um, we are trying to lean um, on Texas A&M. They have a great vet school. And so we're hoping to bring in some vets from there. Yeah. Awesome. I like it. And yeah. I, I have recently been involved in some um, working with vet students. So I wonder okay. if we couldn't like maybe get some of the vet students and like do some cross education. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. I'm saying definitely that would be it, amazing. Yes. Definitely open to that. Excellent. All right. Well, I, I am just, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys doing this and um, how important it is. I think um, based on my own experience with the with the audience that you're reaching to they it is this is needed and it is valuable well and as, as the last thing i'd kind of like to point out is part of being part and you know ahead of breeder development is without breeders <laughs> akc doesn't exist akc sports don't exist and no matter what the sport is um and so encouragement of um new breeders to even dip their toe in the water or uh, you know, those breeders that are having a hard time and getting downtrodden and, and, and feel like they're fighting against the tide, like anything we can do to encourage all of them, because at the end, as I said, at the, I may have said this before, at the end of the day, that not all of them are going to keep at the end of the day, those puppy buyers are what, what really is what matters, right? They're the ones that love that dog for the rest, you know, for its lifetime and make our hearts feel warm and fuzzy. And so we get to have our dogs to, you know, play with and show or performance, whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, we make so many people happy with that puppy. And so if we can do such a good job to make everybody have a good experience, to me, that's, that's my job. And that's what I take seriously. I all right. Well, I think the family that we develop, right? All of us, when we sell our place, our puppies, um, it's, it's important. And yeah. So she's tearing up. <clears throat> she is tearing up. <laughs> she's tearing Sorry. up. That's cute. She's tearing up. Um, you're right. In the middle of a family thing. So I'm saying it, yeah. family matters and, yeah. and, um, 
being able to develop great dogs that go into great families that become part of your family. I mean, for exactly. me, I mean, yeah. these yeah. people are my family. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think Agreed. that's a thing. So, all right. Well, thank you very much, ladies. I really, really appreciate it. You will send me some links that I will drop yes. in the show notes. Listeners, you're going to get to go to the website and learn more. So I will see you all soon, right? Everybody's yes. going to be in the garden. Yeah, I'm here. Oh. I'm already in New York. Oh, sure. <laughs> Not me. All right. All right. I'll be there. Sh- I'll be there soon. All okay. right, you guys. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for us.